Hey guys, Blake here with another video and today I want to bring you 10 awesome cichlids for the new beginner hobbyist. So let's jump straight into the video. Okay guys, so with this top 10 list of beginner cichlids, I've got a few things that I've kept in mind. First one is durability. Uh, they have to be fairly non-sensitive to water parameters and things like that. Um, for the most part, I've steered clear of super aggressive fish. Where I have, I'll let you know why I've said that they'd be okay for beginners, even if they are aggressive. So we'll jump into that in a little bit. But other than that, I've just sort of tried to come up with 10 um, quite sturdy fish that for the most part will give hobbyists more joy than uh, headaches. So the first one on the list, we have Bolivian Rams, AKA the Microgeophagus ultispinosus. And they're a great little South American fish. They're not the smallest fish though, they'll get around 3.5 inches, 10 centimeters around that mark. So you want to keep them in a fairly wide tank, um, but you know, your 30 gallons and so forth will be okay. Or for those of us that use liters, around the 120 liters, something like that. They are a super peaceful cichlid, which is awesome. My, being a microgeophagus, they love to sort of sift around the sand and things like that. So keep them on a substrate that's not so coarse and chunky that they can actually exhibit that natural behavior. And it's a great um, benefit to have that as well because they'll also keep your substrate nice and clean. In the fish store, you probably won't consider them because they'll look sort of a beigey, browny sort of fish and they won't have too much, you know, really redeeming qualities in the store. But you'll get them home, you'll get them nice the condition and they'll give you that reward. You'll start to see some really nice vibrant colors coming through on their fins like pinks and reds. So the first one on the list is the Bolivian Ram because super peaceful, super hardy and may even keep your substrate nice and clean. Second one on the list is a little bit higher on the aggression scale. We're talking about electric yellows or yellow labs here, Libidochromus ceruleus, and they're an African cichlid and a mabuna, which means that they sort of like to hang around rocks. So give them a nice rocky structure, ideally with limestone. You can use base rock or Texas holy rock and that will buffer the pH up to where these Malawi cichlids really want the water to be nice and hard. Give them a ton of rocky areas to set up territories because that will help to disperse aggression. You want things like line of sight blocks, but I guess the downside to that is that they can be quite a shy fish, so you want to sort of keep lots of them in the tank as well, which might mean that beginners may struggle with uh, water chemistry a little bit. The good thing is if we are willing to trade off some potential shyness and hiding and also a little bit of aggression, we will get an awesome bright yellow fish. And it's a really stunning fish. They have some really unique behaviors. They're a mouth brooder. So the females you'll see just cruising around one day with a big old mouth full of eggs and that'll be really rewarding. You can learn things like stripping and using an egg tumbler and things like that. Teach you some really great techniques for the uh, aquarium hobby. So a super sturdy fish as well, really hardy, and um, just make sure that you don't feed them too much protein because they will get bloated with too much protein. So keep a veggie based diet and you'll do just fine. So number two on the list, Yellow Labs, AKA electric yellow cichlids. Whilst we're talking about yellow labs, we might as well talk about peacock cichlids, which is number three on the list. I like peacocks, they get quite a bit bigger than the Mabuna such as Yellow Labs. But the good thing about that is they're gonna be a lot more confident. Uh, they can handle a bit more of an omnivorous diet, so a little bit of protein isn't too bad with these guys. Um, they're open water swimmer, so you don't need to necessarily keep the rocks in as much. Although the pH does still need to be nice and high for these guys. Once again, they are a mouth brooding cichlid, so you will get that behavior experience as well, which is really great for beginners. And you can get them in all sorts of colors of the rainbow. Uh, my personal favorite is OBs, but um, you know, it's a personal choice. You can get bright yellows, blues, whatever you like. Downside to peacocks is that they're you know, quite bigger, stockier sort of fish, and they are that open water swimmer. So you wanna keep them in a nice long tank, minimum of uh, four foot, I would say 120 centimeters. Uh, but ideally bigger than that even. Maybe like a six by 18 by 18 uh, would be a good size if you're gonna choose a tank long term for a, a fair few peacocks. Okay, so we're ready for a change of pace now. We want something super tiny and super peaceful. And I can understand that if I'm a beginner. So we got ourselves the um, dwarf flag cichlid, the Laetakara curviceps, beautiful little uh, golden, um, cichlid which will have a nice rounded head on it and some bluish tins in the finnage. 
This is a cichlid you can keep with absolutely anything, keep it with tetras if you like. It's not going to exhibit any aggressive behavior whatsoever, so you can rest easy at night and feel comfortable checking in on the morning that nothing has gone wrong. They're also cool because they will exhibit a lot of the parenting behavior that the egg spawning cichlids on this list exhibit. So you can even potentially uh, have them spawn within a community tank. If that does happen, just be mindful that they will sort of defend their territory. So if you've got sort of dopey or clumsy fish that are willing to go into the area that they're gonna spawn in, well, they might get chased out of there or nipped, but it's nothing too crazy and it's certainly not the aggression levels of, say for example, the Mabuna that we've talked about earlier. I think these are a fabulous little dwarf cichlid and um, a great addition to the beginner's aquarium. Late Akara literally means happy Akara, which I think is a great sign for your community tank. They get uh, a lot smaller as well, maxing out at around two inches or five centimeters. They're adaptable to a wide range of pH values and things like that. And just overall, they're just gonna be a great time for your community tank. So I'd always recommend Late Akara Curviceps to any beginner out there. Next cichlid on the list I've got for you is the angelfish. Actually, yes, it is a cichlid and I believe they have a pretty bad rap as being aggressive. I've never found them to be aggressive at all, even when spawning. So I guess it comes down to the individual angelfish. So keep that in mind. But in terms of the body shape, I think it's absolutely iconic. People will recognize it immediately as an angelfish and they're just a general staple. They'll go super well in community tanks. Um, just keep, them, keep in mind that adult angelfish may eat the occasional neon tetra, so keep in there things that are gonna be larger than that. Other than that, you can get some really stunning colorations of angelfish, and I just think they're a really beautiful looking fish. So they're not gonna do too much damage, even if you do have an aggressive one. They sort of go with more of a pecking action than really a munching or biting action, so I think that's a bit more of a safeguard as well. Once again, super adaptable to a wide range of water parameters. So they've been domesticated for a long time now and most of them that you will get will be um, actually hobby, hobby raised fish, which is really sustainable as well. Easy to breed, even beginners will probably find accidental spawns will happen. So there's no um, issues there. And they'll also take to a bunch of prepared foods like flakes and pellets super easily. So that's a great point as well. So I'd certainly recommend angelfish for any beginner. Next one on the list is probably the most aggressive cichlid on this list. Uh, but convict cichlids, uh, I think, are a great beginner cichlid. They're pretty much bulletproof. Uh, they're basically impossible to kill. But to trade off for that, you will have to deal with some aggression issues, especially if you get a breeding pair. As long as you have a female and male, you'll probably end up with a breeding pair. They are super easy to breed, which is part of the reason I would certainly recommend them for beginners. So I would say in the context of uh, beginners keeping them in a species only tank, then convicts make a great beginner cichlid because they're easy to breed. They exhibit some really nice coloration. They're super cheap and they're absolutely bulletproof. So for those reasons, whilst it might seem a bit of a strange um, choice, given that they are hyper aggressive, I think that being kept to themselves, they will certainly be able to work things out amongst themselves and um, they will bring a lot of joy once you get breeding action and stuff like that happening. So I will say that this list isn't counting down to the best. Each of these cichlids have really great positives and some negatives, some of them um, to beginners. So um, just take it in your own stride there. We're not counting up or down to anything in this case. It, perhaps in stark contrast to the convict cichlid, the next one I'm going to recommend is the Neolamprologus multifasciatus shell dwellers. Super tiny little cichlid that you will be able to breed easily and they exhibit really unique behavior as well being shell dwellers. They like to live in shells. So fill up the whole substrate with shells and they'll do lots of little digging around and breeding within the shell. and and all that sort of thing. Just make sure that you get big enough shells that they're not gonna get stuck in them. You'll probably be fine. They get some really nice colorations. I would suggest that if you're looking for something slightly different to Maltese, you could go with Neolamprologus similis, which I think are a really awesome shell dweller as well. But each to their own. I know a lot of people really enjoy the look of Multifasciatus as well. Super peaceful, but once again, you know, you probably want to keep them by themselves just because they might be a target for other fish. Um, and you'll probably never see them if there's any other, anything bigger in the water column that's going to scare them into the shells all the time. But shell dwellers are certainly unique in their behavior, and I think they're really awesome. Peaceful, 
great looking and um, you can keep them in the smaller tanks as well. So for those reasons, I think they're great beginner cichlids. Next on the list, we actually have another African cichlid, but this one doesn't need the high pH that the others ha that I've mentioned to have. So these guys are Crubensis, super accessible, super cheap. You'll probably find them at most local fish stores. Uh, they're easy to breed once again, and they show some really nice coloration. You do have a little bit of dimorphism, so males look quite different to females, but females, especially in breeding uh, dress, will get some really nice deep purple colors in the belly, which I think is really stunning. Uh, they do get a little bit aggressive when breeding, but apart from that, you can keep them in most community uh, tanks without a problem, just as long as, once again, you don't have tiny little tetras or rasboras that are gonna be meals for the Crebenzis. They'll pair off super easily and breed really easily as well. So you won't have any problems there and you might get a lot of enjoyment out of breeding perhaps your first um, egg laying fish. So for those reasons, I think cribs make awesome beginner fish. And if you do want something different, there is a few different options available as well um, in the Pelvicochromus family. So you can get Subocellatus, for example, but there's many others. And uh, I recommend just doing your own research and checking out the different varieties that are available. So Crebenzis certainly make the list of beginner cichlids. Next cichlid on the list is a really stunning cichlid. This is the Electric Blue Akara. Bit more of a chunkier sort of size, probably around about that three inches mark, um, seven to eight centimeters, something like that. Beautiful electric blue coloration in the scales, nice shimmer action. Through a planter tank, they'll look really nice. They will be suitable for a planted tank, but you might find that they become excavators, especially if they uh, decide to breed and find a little area that they want to breed in. Some of them also just like to pull up plants for the fun of it, just to troll the owners. So just be mindful of that. Other than that, you'll get beautiful coloration. For the most part, a very peaceful cichlid and one that will go perfectly fine with things like rainbow fish or angel fish and things like that. Not too expensive either and pretty easy to find. So I'd certainly recommend electric blue acaras or neon blue acaras for beginners. Second last one on the list today is the uh, banded cichlid, also known as the severum, the heros severus. And these guys are peaceful, but one of the largest cichlids that I've presented to you today. So these guys get about 20 centimeters, which is about eight inches, but they are pretty, pretty peaceful all the time, except when spawning, like most of the cichlids really. They exhibit a discus type shape and do come in a variety of colors as well. So it's worth checking out all the different varieties of severums that are available to keep. Upside is you'll have a peaceful, beautiful, placid addition to any tank. Downside is that that tank will need to be quite large. But overall, a safe choice for beginners is the Severum. And last on the list is maybe another controversial one. One that is, has been kept by beginners um, for years and years, maybe without being recommended even. But I believe the Oscar Cichlid is a great option for beginners. I think the important thing is though, that the beginners should be well researched before picking them up, which is, I guess, historically what has not been the case. So by watching this video, if you are a beginner, I think you're taking the right steps. And so long as you do get a large enough tank, you'll be able to comfortably keep an Oscar cichlid. Things to keep in mind are that they're big waste producers, so you want to keep up on the water changes. They're heavy protein consumers, which, which does also add to the waste production. What you'll get in return is a fish that is absolutely dripping with personality, uh, a true water puppy or wet pet. They will come and greet you as soon as you enter your fish room or house, or wherever you like to keep your aquarium. Um, they will really get to know you and you'll really get to know them. And it's a really rewarding relationship you can get with a well-treated Oscar. So as long as you keep a big enough tank, I would say at a minimum four by 18 by 18, but ideally bigger than that. You wanna keep especially the width so that they can turn around because they do get quite large. So a 14 inch wide tank is not gonna be big enough to be able to cater for a fully grown Oscar. Keep up on the water changes because they are susceptible to certain diseases such as hole in the head. But in return, you'll get an absolute classic, a pet that you can pretty much even pat on the head if you feel like training it that way. And one that will reward you in spades. So the last one I'm gonna give you today is the Oscar Cichlid fantastic fish and one of the staples in the hobby for a reason. So there you go guys, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, 10 great cichlids for beginners list. If you got some more that I may have forgotten, drop them down in the comments below so that other beginners maybe watching this video might be able to get some more inspiration if they're not taken by the list so far. 
other than that, if you liked the video, it always helps me to smash like, hit subscribe, and ding the notification bell. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.